Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Civi 398 assignment guide. In this assignment guide, we're going to be covering assignment 5, question 4, which is our introduction to the equilibrium equations. And as I kind of hinted in the previous assignment questions, this is when students start figuring out, oh, this class is a little difficult. But don't worry, it's not difficult. When it comes to equilibrium equations, there's little tricks. And once you guys know the tricks, you guys will become experts, and you'll be good to go. And I'll make sure that I tell you all the tricks. So for question four here, it says the state of stress inside a continuum is represented by the matrix with the following components. So we have a stress matrix, as we can see and as we can expect, it's symmetric. But inside of this matrix, we have five unknown constants. We have alpha, beta, delta, gamma, and z. And z is that like little squiggly one. I don't really know if I'm saying that correctly, but uh, <laughs> I see it a lot in finite elements. So I know that it's pronounced z, or not pronounced z, but it's spelled xi. So I'm going to say z. <laughs> Who knows, though? Well, you guys probably do. I don't. <laughs> All right. So the question says, if the continuum has a density rho, which is equal to 4 kilograms per meter cubed, determine. And the question's only asking two parts, so it's not too bad at all. It says, the first part, determine the coefficients alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and z if the state of stress is in static equilibrium when the body force vector is equal to 11, 7, and 15 newtons per kilogram. So that's not a bad question at all. And part B is actually a sneaky question, as you guys will see, where it says, using the coefficients found in part A, determine the acceleration vector if B is equal to 0, 0, 0 newtons per kilogram. So if B is equal to the zero vector. And as you guys will see, that's a tricky question. Or not, it's a sneaky question, because it's really easy if you guys know the, <laughs> know the little trick. But let's jump into part A because this is where students will have the most problems. So if we have a bunch of unknowns, you guys may be thinking, well, you know, if I have five unknowns, I need five equations. And this is where equilibrium equations will start throwing students off because very rarely will you have that scenario. So from equilibrium equations, we have three equations and they are as follows. So the first equation, we have partial sigma 1, 1 with respect to x1, partial sigma 2, 1 with respect to x2, plus partial sigma 3, 1 with respect to x3, plus rho b, where b is the body force vector, is equal to rho a, where a is the acceleration vector, and it goes so on for uh, the second and third equation. Now, this is all you guys are going to be given. You have three equations, and it doesn't matter how many unknowns you have. So this is when students start freaking out because they say, well, in this question, I have five unknowns, but I got three equations. How can I solve for that? And that's where the special trick comes in. So as you guys will see in the next slide, there's a special trick. But for these equilibrium equations, even though you have three equations, you do have enough information to solve the problem once you guys know the trick. But let's say that you don't know the special trick. Let's try and think of what we can do right now to figure out what to do. So the equation, or I guess the question, says that it's in static equilibrium. So if something's static, it's not moving, it's not accelerating. Therefore, our acceleration vector is the zero vector. So all these three equations will be equal to zero because the A components on the right-hand side, they'll cancel out and go to zero. But still, we have the problem where we have three equations, but five unknowns. So I put a sad face because, of course, that's not nice. Five equations, three unknowns. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to use the special trick. So the key to solving the coefficients in this problem, as well as every other equilibrium problem, is that the equation must be valid for all coordinates. And you're saying, Clayton, what exactly does this mean? Well, when you take your partial differentials, chances are the equations will still have x1, x2, and x3. Now, if I look at this one, there is no x3 after we take the partial differentials, but uh, equation 1 and equation 2 will feature x1, and they'll feature x2. Therefore, if it's valid under any coordinate system, sorry, in any of the coordinates, we can substitute values into x1 and x2 to help us solve these equations. So with that, I have some recommended combinations that I would recommend for this problem as well as any others that you guys might see. The first one is x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 0. This will cancel out any of the coefficients in front of these x1 or x2. So if you have any constants, such as I believe delta in the case of equation 1 in this question, you can easily solve for it. The second combination, of course, would be x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 0, because in this case, we'll cancel out any coefficients in front of x2, and therefore we'll be able to solve for any coefficients in front of x1. And then we can do the opposite, where we say x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 1. This will allow us to solve for any coefficients in front of x2 and cancel out any of the unknown ones in front of x1. So if we're looking at these recommended combinations, there is a similarity between them. 
all of them feature one of the variables equal to zero, because that'll help us cancel out our coefficients. If I have an unknown coefficient in front of x2, well, I can say x2 is equal to zero, and then it, it cancels out. It's gone. I don't have to worry about it. If I were to pick, let's say, x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 1, that's completely valid. The equation will hold true because, remember, this will hold true no matter what you pick. However, you may not cancel anything out, and therefore the equation doesn't really help you solve for anything. So that is, therefore, I like to have some of the variables equal to 0, and then stuff will start canceling out. So I prepared a little bit of a slide to help show you guys this. So let's look at the second equilibrium equation for my example. So here's the equilibrium equation, and I can take the information given in the question to get the following equation. So this is just based upon the second equilibrium equation. I got negative beta x2 plus 6x2 plus z plus 4 times 7 is equal to 0. So the question becomes, OK, I have one equation, but two unknowns. And I highlighted them in red to really emphasize two unknowns. So a lot of students will say two equations, but one, sorry, one equation, two unknowns. I can't do that. Maybe I'll get something from the next equation. They'll move on. However, now that you guys know the trick of substituting in variables for x1 and x2, or substituting in numbers, we can actually solve for these two unknowns just with one equation. So let's say I take x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 0. And I didn't really need to include x1 because if we look at the equation, it just has x2. But let's say we take x2 is equal to 0. Well, then we got beta times 0. Well, that's going to be 0. Plus 6 times 0. Well, that's going to be 0. Plus c plus 28 is equal to 0. So if I factor in the fact that beta just got canceled by the 0 as well as the 6, my only unknown in this equation will be that z. So therefore, from this equation, I can solve for z. And I can say, OK, now let's say I take x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 1. Well, now I got negative beta times 1 plus 6 plus z plus 28 is equal to 0. And even though it appears like I have two unknowns in this equation, I already know what the value of z is from the previous equation. So if I already know what z is from the previous equation, well, then I can solve for b in this case. And that's it. That's all. So once you guys know the special trick, things are really easy because you guys can solve for these variables right away. You guys all have no problems at all. Now let's talk about part b. Where part B kind of does the opposite, because in part A, we, were we said that it's in static equilibrium. So therefore, there's no acceleration, and we were given a body force vector. Now, part B kind of switches it around, where it says there are zero body forces, so that B components in this equation will be zero. But what is the acceleration vector? So let's think about the situation in part A. Here's the general equation. And we said, OK, part A is in static equilibrium, so we know that the acceleration vector is going to be equal to zero. So I can do that, and then I can say, OK, well, hold on a second. Well, let's say, say I do some algebra for fun. Let's move the zero vector to the left side, and let's move the row B to the other side. And I get this right here. Well, now the key is to realize, hey, wait a second. This equation that I have after I rearrange is exactly what part B wanted. I have all my partial differentials. I have zero in the place of the body force vector. And then I have some component as the acceleration vector. So I know I'm not giving you guys too much, but this should be really obvious on what your acceleration vector is going to be. Remember, it's a sneaky question. It's not a tricky question. Once you guys understand the little trick right here real quick, you guys will be able to solve for the acceleration vector just by inspection. You guys won't have to do any math or anything. So that concludes question number four. Again, equilibrium equations. Eh, students don't like them too much, but I hope this helped. Uh, there's usually two types of equilibrium questions. This is the first one. Question five will be the second one. And question five is usually the one you guys hate more. So hopefully I cleared up all the questions concerning this first part of the equilibrium topic. And hopefully I can solve the questions concerning the second part, which will be in question number five. So thank you guys all so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in question number five.